All right, I was headed in to go edit this video and all I wanted to say was I've found some mistakes I'm doing like moving the camera too fast, shaking it. You know, you gotta make the mistakes to correct them. So just be patient. Literally four months into this and it's, it's absolutely, enjoy the video. All right, this is definitely going to be a multi-part build series. Uh, got a lot to learn. You know, I'm still new to all this channel, but I just let you see the Jeep first and then we'll kind of go over what I've got planned for it. O1 Cherokee, I mean, motor's good. Uh, Rusty's long arm, it's actually got ABS. I don't know, I might leave that, I might take it off. Uh, most of the stuff's good. Let's see, leaf spring on that side is broke. So that is one thing I want to fix. It's kind of sagging on this side, if you can tell. I don't care. But uh, probably ain't going to do nothing cosmetic. I just uh, got some stuff on the underside. And while I got it out, this is a different video. I'm doing a uh, video on if a high pressure, high, a high volume oil pump will change low oil pressure. So uh, I think that's it on the G. Stock gears. And what's crazy is this thing will still pull a hill like it's 65 at like 1400 rpm so pretty stout motor i think it's been programmed but who knows so walk in the shop check out my redneck air conditioner here blowing across my candles in a diff cover trying to combat mosquitoes high pinion 30 that one has the low pinion so we're going high pinion probably going to get rid of the converters on that one i don't know yet uh same thing well eight and a quarter back here so I've got a set of 456 gears. I've already cheated and took everything out. Y'all probably know what them things are. Spicer ball joints, upper bushings. Uh, I gotta rebuild the front uh, drive shaft. That's not gonna make the video. Doing WJ knuckles on that. And I think I'm gonna do something different than every, everybody else. The brakes suck on that thing. I don't know why they're so bad. So I've got those twin pistons for up front and then the i've never done the liberty usually still the ones off the dana 35 on like the zj but this is the ones off of a liberty and that should be direct bolt on to the chrysler oh uh, and i mean y'all if y'all know me that's not what i will nor that thing i mean these are just pavement pavement princesses so no shame in that but i want everything to look cool and i've got some gussets for knuckles that uh wj knuckle spacers cvs oh crap there's leaf springs the cv axles then i got some crossover steering and a new set of shocks uh, so yeah it's a uh, hot and i've got a microphone on the way for the camera so to make it better quality so i'm gonna go ahead and work on the gears i'm not gonna like do it you know every step fall along on them so as i go i'll keep y'all up there. i had to open the box up and check these things out i gotta sit on my other jeep over there they're aluminum i know you can't tell in the video but they uh they weigh nothing they got rope tying them together so, kind of excited about that that thing rides terrible that thing rides amazing for some reason i was parking the jeep and forgot to show you i'll check the headliner out so skulls and i put the whatever them things are so pretty cool jeep there's something else oh i made these this is the first thing i've ever painted in my life but i think they're cracking yeah somebody told me to use bondo that didn't work out but if y'all know these usually stop right here so that's just something i did like i said this jeep's probably gonna get painted seems like there's one more thing it's my golf jeep i just use it to go golfing in so pretty serious build here air blows cold Didn't want to stop time lapse, but I don't forget to tell you all this stuff. Got the pinion in, 30 thousandths for preload shim, or not preload, uh, pre shim depth. There you go. Uh, one thing, don't forget this these bolts are right handed, no, left handed thread, so you actually loosen to go in. So when you're taking an old one out, you actually 
tighten them. I see countless people strip them out, including me. Got to learn the hard way. I'm trying to save y'all some time. And, oh, it still gets confusing. When you put this gear on, this pin is going to hit right in there. And I'll show you when I get there if I don't forget. But they say it's okay. Take a grinder, die grinder, whatever you got to get to get the pin in there. I don't know how they agree with that. But, yep, making progress. Got the bearings off. Got the bearings pressed on. This is my favorite thing about the Chryslers is you don't have to worry about the shims left or right. It's got the turn, I don't know the name for them, whatever they're called. So, got to get the gear on there and then start playing with some gear mesh. Got the gears in. I try not to overcomplicate them. This side, coast side, looks good. This side's got flat lines right there. Never want flat lines. So, you can go through this book and anytime the flat lines are on this side, pinion is too close. Same thing here. Flat lines on the bottom, pinion is too close. So, take it apart remove some shims try again something simple i always do just put a piece of soft metal between your hard gear or hardened material maybe won't booger the threads up get that knocked off there and show you what i'm doing all right i'm not gonna get no too technical on the gears but this is kind of crappy oh <clears throat> i don't know if you're supposed to when you do builds like name off i got precision this ebay that spicer richmond gears I don't know if that's the proper way so i'll just kind of say it as i go along maybe so i got richmond gears and they sent me like the shims are weird there's a 12 an 18 and three nines and i had a 12 and 18 which makes 30 and by the book i need less so three nines is 27. we're gonna try it i don't know it's kind of a gamble but i ain't got much to work with it's weird well i believe this is my sign I uh, messed the nut up. I don't know if y'all can see the threads in there very good. And the one they come with is good, but it's a bigger nut. It's a bigger size. And the socket that fits it don't fit the yoke. So, it's dark. I'm going to find a yoke in the, or a nut in the morning. All right, we ain't gotten a, a gooder nut. So, I'm going to clamp her down. See what the gear mesh looks like. One of the little tricks I was going to show you is the way the Chrysler one is. I leave this one where it's at and only loosen that one. That way when you go back to the other, you can just tighten this one up and the gear mesh should be relatively close. And that's what I was gonna say. If you can see the straight lines on that one right there, that's what we're trying to get rid of. This one's usable. We're trying to get rid of those straight lines. So moved it in. Let's see if that took care of that. I may delete the seam, but you can see the straight edges right there at the base of the uh, like bottom of the gear. So we'll cover them back up, free smear this side, and try again. I've done like a ton of gears. Like, I don't know how to explain how many sets of gears I've done. But this is my first time doing Richmond gears, and I don't know if I'll be buying them again. I will say Motive gear and USA Standard. Motive, I can usually get Motive on like the second, some, well, other one I did the other day, I got both of them the first time. But finally got uh, got a smooth pattern on drive side, got a smooth pattern on heel side. Pushing the limits on a backlash here, but we're gonna let it ride. So, oh, I gotta, you have to grind this pin right here. I don't remember if I ever said that or not. You gotta grind these pins right here to get the uh, pin in. So I'm gonna get that knocked out and I guess start on the front gears. This right here is what I'll be talking about. See, it won't it won't go. So luckily mine lined up perfect. I just got to trim on one. So yeah, I'm gonna get the grinder out and then I got to clean all this yellow crap up. You can see very tight tolerances here but all i had to do was barely trim them right there and it'll fall right in there but now i guess it's time to the brakes i think no 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 we got to set the uh pre not preload crush sleeve up on that make sure all that's good so it's about 90 something degrees in here i'm going to give all the rotors a coat of paint. And then that way I'm gonna go to my brother's shop across the road and turn them down. And it's kind of cool. You paint everything and when you turn it down, just the shiny part where you turned it will be showing. So get that knocked out, flip them over, get the other side, 
go turn the rotor. Well, not a whole lot to see, but you can see the gap there. So get all these turned down so we'll have fresh brakes on the Jeep. Justin decided to hang some beads off this thing. I've been going on for quite a while. Got the rotors done. You can see what I'm talking about. This one turns out it was beyond usable. It's actually like angled. So got them knocked out of the way. You can make noise. One step down. Fun fact: this Jeep right here, ZJ, it don't have a harmonic balancer. The rubber fell off, or whatever you call it. So I just got a shorter belt. AC works. Got power steering. I got a short video on it somewhere. Pretty crazy. All right, I'm back in the shop here. I'm gonna we'll knock the front gears out as quick as possible. And like I said, I won't get those done in case whatever. I don't really know why I wanna get those done. What I'm gonna do, to try to walk y'all through some just little tricks here and there. Oh, uh, these are like 20 bucks. So if you wanna put gears in, these are really help out. And if you go to this book, I'm sure you can internet research this. It tells you, it's called, oh, OEM shim depth is what it's called and if you look I don't know if GoPro likes doing this come on man $4 camera can't read numbers I ain't gonna do it oh uh, Dana 30 is 65 thousandths and that's what you have to account for what's called the oil slinger that's usually that varies on like factory setups those are all different sh thicknesses so in a kit that's 30 thousand this is like the oil catch ring holds oil up in the bearings up there. It's 20,000. So really and truly, you only have to add 15,000 of these pieces that go behind there. So just the more you know, uh, got a gears on there, got the bearings. I'll show you another little trick here in a second. And uh, I don't know whether to add stuff or not. If you want to pull these bearings off, I know they make fancy tools. This thing at Harbor Freight's about 20 bucks or maybe it's a little more, but all you do is slide it, clamp it behind there, and then put this on, and then I've got just some random bolts. You don't have to have these specific ones. And then you clamp these down, holding that on, and don't have to be my tool or not, but I stick something off in the hole, and then same Harbor Freight jig right there, go across it, and it'll pull that bearing off there. So I know them tools are intimidatingly expensive, and I don't have them, and I still get the stuff done. So, yeah. Go get the gears mocked up. Why not I freeze on camera? I'm glad I do this for, well, don't do it for a living, but I've done it before. They did not send the, what do you call these? God, why not I freeze on camera? Crush sleeve eliminator bush or shims. So luckily I got some of them get the job done. And that's what I was gonna say. You do not have to worry about these until you have your in and out right and then you come back and set this up afterwards. Don't matter. Just get it tight enough where it's resistance. Alright, I got the gear set off in there. Just random little tips as we go. The caps, in case you didn't know this, I know I've done videos before, but they have letters or there are different orientations so you can't get the caps mixed up and then shims go behind these on certain year models and what i do is i take oh uh, well you have to find the right size shim and i put them on the outside and get my backlash just right and then i'll pull them off and pull the bearing off usually depending on the application i add five six to ten thousandths on each side and that way it way when it presses together it's tighter but then the carrier will actually stay up in the hole no. so just a little trick uh more oh that's another thing i know these little white peanut styrofoam things you wouldn't think would mess you up but they'll have that yellow crap smeared everywhere so get all them took care of man i don't know if y'all ever use that uh yellow stuff to mark gears with so aggravating i put two dabs on it now it's everywhere but the gear mesh is good so I'm gonna try to get all that stuff cleaned up and move on. So I said I wasn't gonna add much gear knowledge to this video, but there's so many little secrets I know will help people along the way. 
And I may have confused you earlier, but what I do is take these that'll fit right here and you can't get many of them in there good and tight. So I just get it as best you can. And what you do is you have to pull this bearing back off and then you have these shims and they go underneath there. That way you can like, you know, I wouldn't say hammered in there, but you can forcefully put this back in there and it'll be right on the money. So take these out, measure them. Usually I add about five thousandths per side, but I wanted to tighten the backlash up. So I'm gonna measure this in exactly. And then I'll probably put like eight or 10 thousandths on this side. And that should bump it that way. So, like I said, just little tricks. I know it'll help somebody, might not help you at the moment, but yep. Just in case you didn't know what I was talking about, I'll show you. These are the shims I had on the outside of the bearing and they're just hard to slide in there. So you take these littler shims and put them right here. That way they're press fit. And you know, if you can imagine trying to slide stuff in with little thin shims don't work. So this is what I said, I'll measure these out, whatever they are, and I'll add about seven, eight thousandths on this side, press it on and you're good to go. Crush sleeve eliminator shims. I remember today, uh, got crush sleeve eliminator shims set up properly. And this axle seal is missing. This one's half in there, so I got new ones. Before I forget, I'm gonna knock them in there, but got the gear mesh. I think I'm gonna knock these axle seals in and probably start welding some stuff on there. Yeah, so nobody likes doing axle seals, including me, but I'll show you what I do. I got like a really long half extension. I got like a cheap adapter put in there to hammer on, and then I've got a socket. So a little tricky to get set up, but there's just no easy way to do it unless you've got like a professional tool. So it does work, just kind of aggravating. Just personal preference, I put Permatex around there. Feel like that helps seal better and <clears throat> it's some form of lubricant to go in there so that definitely got to help now i'll stick the seal close up in there put my socket on and then get a hammer Pretty sure they bought them out and i always do this one first that way this uh extension has something to rest on going this way help it line up a little better all right i got the axle seals popped in there everything bolted up uh i bolted these up i hope they're right i'm gonna go ahead and fully weld them get that knocked out uh still got something cool coming on the knuckle i don't know if it'll be this video and let's see this thing common sense goes yep i said common sense can't get it in there you got to finesse it, kind of beat it in there with a hammer. I've already actually twisted it in the vise to make it fit a little better. And I hope I ain't already said this in the video, but I just assumed that the bigger one was for the bottom. I chased that thing around forever. And turns out it hooks right in there. I think I got it the right way. I believe I do. And I guess you tap that down with a hammer and fully weld that. Yeah, that's got to be the right way. So probably a little finessing. Probably got to grind it here and there. Get it perfect fit. And then these things, these are lower braces, lower knuckle braces. And they are per side. So I think that's the way it goes right there. I don't really think you need them, but I bought them. And I'm going to throw some uh, pair of breeches on and get this welding done before it gets scorching hot. I was trying to get everything welded before lunchtime. Didn't happen. Got this welded up there. Uh, that one halfway welded. And I'm not a welder. Never claimed to be. Never will. But I think I need to notch about right there. It uh, won't quite reach the uh, axle tube. Got these welded on. Uh, I don't think they're hot. And I was trying to make those welds look better. I got to think me and whoever's watching this video are the only people that will ever see them welds unless I sell the Jeep. So.
I'll come back, finish the welding up, keep moving forward. I'm actually gonna drive the Jeep to town. Uh, I'll, yeah, I don't know if I ever said that in the first video. The reason I'm doing all this, number one, the brakes suck. And it's got like uh, bump steer so bad and the camber's off so bad, it kind of darts in the road. So don't really want to adjust the camber back because it's low pinion, so it'll have the pinion like pointed down. It's the whole reason of the high pinion. So yeah, let me shut everything down and we'll drive it to town. It's got good air conditioner. I don't know if y'all can tell in the video how terrible this thing rides, which my road sucks, but like, let's see. Well, it ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna show you bump steer on the highway, but you can see nothing just really happens. Steering's kind of floppity. So scared to watch the steering wheel across this dip right here. That's pretty sketchy when you hit it about 60. So I got the lower braces fitting a whole, whole lot better. Cut just a little notch out. I don't know how good you can see that, but that tucks up there a little better. And I laid it right here, and you can see how I've bent it out a little bit. That just helps it lay down. So I am going to try to get some of that dirt off there so that'll weld a little better. And I got to get a torch to straighten this up, or get the torch to make it easier anyway, and then straighten this one out. And then I was going to order some lower braces, but turns out nobody makes them. The only ones I found, you had to cut the entire brace or bracket off so i've got some i'll show you here in just a second what i pretty much use on all of my jeeps out there seems to work pretty good got me a new rosebud but uh turns out it don't fit my torch so stuck with that cutter head but i believe it'll get the job done Well, it for sure ain't perfect, but it'll get the job done. So get those pieces cut out. I might just use a torch on them. I'll show you what they look like. So I uh, just cut some little tabs there. I'm gonna let them air cool. And I'm gonna, well, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna bolt the uh, brakes up on the rear cause FedEx just came by, but I realized the axle won't support it itself without no bearing. So I'm gonna put the bearing in, no seal. I still don't know if I'm gonna powder coat these or what I'm gonna do. We'll get the seals or er, the bearings. The bearings knocked off in there. I like this flip flopping back and forth between axles. You don't get bored on one, you just keep moving back and forth. So about forgot the backing plate that's the whole reason you had to take the axles out and so weird i had bearings the same part number same company they're made different this one fell apart i don't know if you've seen me struggling i had to pop all the rollers back in there but got them in there uh i don't really know why but let's well i already got calipers but i got some cool brake pads let me open this box i hope they're all in the box i don't know yeah i think these are gonna be for the front there's something carbon fiber ceramic porn. they look pretty cool for the cost of what you're gonna pay in town yeah they come with rubbers and everything i mean obviously it don't look like but nothing but a brake pad but maybe they'll help us stop a little better there's only like i think 60 bucks for Front and maybe the rear. Oh, I got some brake lines. So yeah, let me get all this situated. This is crazy. I normally wouldn't video stuff like this. I just got done explaining to you that the bearings were the same bearing in the same box, the same part number, were built different. I got two brake lines, a left and a right, same brand, same everything. One of them come with washers, one of them didn't. And then one of them has like a spinny mount here, and then the other one has a hard mount. What are the odds? I mean, I literally back to back got same parts with different, made different. Got the calipers mounted up there. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep the, like a clean look here. Just go up and over and then right about there. Gotta get this mount, cut it on the green line, and then obviously weld it. And that should keep the brake lines pretty clean. Not hanging down, zip tied, nothing like that. So we'll get these cut off here. 
Heck yeah, those worked out perfectly. They took dinner up there. I had to figure out, well, no, I'm say that. There's like phase, so got them. And that's basically it on the rear end. I mean, weld them. Got to get a diff cover and a yoke. But that's about it. But I'm starting to think I want to put a truss on there. I think that would look so much better. Like I said, y'all, I've done admitted these are just pavement princesses. I don't care to, I'm not ashamed by that at all. Y'all seen what I actually will, but I just enjoy builds. So let's go look. Heck, I don't even know if you can do it on the front neither. Go this way. So we'll go see how much of a truss we could add. Let's see. Oh, it's got stuff everywhere. Oh. Axle's kind of laid back, so you'd have to truss it forward. Shocks wouldn't be in the way. I think I'll do it. I don't think I'll. It'll take much of one just to look cooler, but the only crappy part is you couldn't even see it. So if I truss it, you want me to be able to notice it. Front, let's check it out. You can see the front, I bet. Yeah, front's got all the room in the world. Sucks, there just ain't no easy way to truss a 30. So I don't even know if I'll mess with it or not. So I got these brackets all cleaned up, ready to go on there. They're not perfect, don't have to be. And this is literally on every one of my Jeeps. This is all I do to lower. Sometimes I'll put like a, uh, like a cross brace here. I don't know what you call it, T-brace, L-brace. But pretty much this is all I ever have to do. And they don't have to go all the way out. And most of them are just tacked, but I'm gonna fully weld these. So gotta weld them, gotta weld these on, finish welding that, weld the washer and tack them the uh, brake okay, brake hose mount so yeah i'm gonna knock all this out real quick much more respect to all the welders out there it's the wrong time of year to be doing these projects but i want to be able to drive the jeep it just kind of sits there I don't drive it because it's horrible oh got everything welded and that's what i was gonna say i talk myself out of trusting it because i get carried away with these builds i get excited about this that and the other next thing you know it, it just never ends that's but that's usually where my cool stuff comes from but um uh, that's done got them tacked on there i still think i'm gonna order diff covers waiting on brake pads this one i'm gonna go ahead and push the bushings in push the ball joints in and I am gonna do something cool with the knuckles, so we gotta get there. And that's what I said. If you really look, this axle's been hacked on before. So if somebody crawls under there and sees that stuff, <coughs> they're gonna find something wrong. So I'm not stressing that. It'll do the job just fine. So yeah, let's get these bushings pressed in there. That God, I hate doing that. And the ball joints. Man, I wish I'd have got that on camera. I wanted to show y'all the setup I use. It's the standard rental tool, whatever and if you can tell that one uh it fits on this side and then a little spacer and that and that pushed it right up in there but you really need that to keep it from collapsing and the next part i've been doing this a long time i know well yeah but these never fit that's what i went and got fancy tools here comes out to 180 in 107 and this comes out to 17 so that's 20 thousandths, which is a lot. So what I do is take a Dremel or a die grinder and waller that out there, or you can probably grind some off that. Been doing it for a long time. I don't know if it's just the wrong bushing, but I, I've never found a solution. That's just what I have to do. But if I get it dremeled out, I'll show you it going in there. One of these things and just go at it like they're right there. We can make that go yeah i think i remember now got an old piece of a drive shaft and i kind of egged it so to fit in there so let's see so close. Oh. 
Precision from O'Reilly. Some other brands, I don't know. Maybe I'm ordering the wrong bushing. Because these are for a control arm. I never even thought about that. Crap. If if I find that out, I will let y'all know know somehow. Because that may be a different bushing. I just assumed it's the same one. If I've got a, if I've got any tricks for these things right here, I'll show you. And that's what I wanted to add. I don't understand why these these kits are like maybe 80, 90 bucks a side. And Spicer comes in every Jeep ever made, and they've all lasted 20 something years, 500,000 miles. Why would you buy anything but those? Moogs are like $300 a side, and they suck. I'm gonna brag so this side won't work, but that one, I like Spicer. I hope this works again. I'm gonna finish tapping it in there. That one fell right in. That one had a little crusty, rusty stuff in there, but now we get to try the ball joints like every other american redneck american i went and grabbed the socket and i don't know and i don't know and a piece of metal but it's in there i i don't do ball joints usually they never go bad but this is the build so we're doing them all right somehow i messed up and forgot an ending to this video so i'm actually on part two right now working on it got everything in the mail so yeah appreciate y'all watching this one and maybe we can get the thing riding driving better soon